What's up, friends? Welcome back. So this is going to be a new series about a dwarf fortress in particular. So my goal here, I'm going to be live streaming this a pretty good bit. And I'm also going to do recap videos like, hey, here's what happened over the last couple of hours. And this is my first such video. So but right now uh, we started a year 100. So it's been a little bit over a year since this fortress started. And we're going to go through uh, the trials and tribulations and whatnot. And also kind of show off what we've built. So this fortress and the way this world generated came out very different than what I'm used to. And it actually had some stuff I uh, loved. I've built about a dozen fortresses trying to find the one that I just like absolutely loved. And this one definitely takes the cake. And it's really going to come down to this river and how this all played out. So... I've got a nice long section of river here. I've built a bridge across to get access to different things like uh, wood on the other side. And more importantly, right here though, we have a huge drop off, um, a waterfall actually, a natural occurring waterfall. And then the river splits off through here. And actually, if you look ahead of myself a little bit there, back up here, you can see each level I mean, like, look at the neatness of it. So I've got all these different uh, potential areas I could build in. So right here, I dug three holes down, went down about, uh, my goal was to get past the water and start building my city. So right out here, I've got my basic first dormitory set up. I've set up a meeting area that's full of animals that are not reporting up to the top for some reason, whatever. I know, right? Unforgivable, Heidi Cat. And then we've also got uh, an area I'm going to use for some offices. And this is where I've got my manager set up. And then I get down into this giant hall. This is kind of how I do my crafting areas. Um, I put all the crafting people here. So uh, if I'm doing a lot of woodworking, I put multiple carpenters, etc., etc. And I basically just line them up and surround them with stuff. Uh, using lots of bins to hold all my goods, which, interesting note, I found out that elves at least seem to hate bins. So, if you're trying to trade with an elf and your stuff's in a bin, well, sorry. At least that's been my luck three times now. Like, I go to trade them a bin of ammunition and they're like, how dare you destroy that tree? You want to buy a wooden sword? And I'm like, really? hypocritical bastards so anyways we have a food stockpile here that's just catching all our different food items uh I'll loading that up with barrels we've got uh, ammunition this is kind of a uh, finished goods and blocks this is where i'm pushing my wood to right by the carpenters and we've got uh just a big area for stone that i'm kind of expanding so i do this pretty much on every fortress i make one floor that's just literally like wide open crafting floor. except for like here i kind of i'm gonna put some doors up here that way if i ever need to protect this area for whatever reason i can but yeah that's kind of my uh how i do crafting floors i've seen other people like carve up little areas for each dwarf and you know that takes a lot of time and effort i just like the big open expansive here's where we're gonna craft uh down our next level we have my first little residential area. So I've built some nice little uh, dolomite walls here. I think I have engraved them, let me check. I have not engraved them yet, but I plan to. So we'll go ahead and get that started. And um, yeah, I'm right now in the process of smoothing out stuff. Um, I've only got a population of 22, so realistically I have higher priority tasks getting completed first. But uh, yeah, here's my first set of bedrooms. I'm working on doors now to door these off. That's uh, going to be my little residential area. And I may expand this down this way. Um, I may get to the end here and kind of do a loop around type thing. But effectively what I want to do, I'm going to plop a statue or an artifact right here. And just kind of have a nice little entrance area. Um, the more... 
statues and stuff like that you put around, the happier you make your dwarves. So forcing them to pass by them is very beneficial to you. Next couple of floors are, uh, this is an empty floor at this point. I haven't done anything down here yet. I may come mine out some dolomite. So let's go back up a little ways to the river level. Because I know I kind of went past that and like, we have a couple of like random pits here. That are just kind of there. I haven't done anything with that. What I did do, hello Azov, the gander. Oh, by the way, leave a comment below if you want something named after you, like a town or a dwarf or a whatever. So, down here I've built a bridge. I've mined all this out and turned this into a giant water gathering and fishing area. And if you go down here, here's where our waterfall falls. Um, this is actually the site of a god-awful disaster. I put a bridge right here on these three tiles. And what that caused when the waterfall came, I didn't realize... I did this when it was all frozen, so I thought the waterfall was falling back here. And it may actually be. But I built this wall. So, effectively, when I put the bridge there, this all flooded with really fast currents. So, I had dwarves working in this area, doing all the mining and whatnot. And when they came out, they walked onto this one foot of water and got swept away. I mean, I legit went from a population of 22 to 7. Because I had that many dwarves working in this area that got murdered by that waterfall. <laughs> so I uh, I didn't really have much of a choice there. That was a pretty big hit. I went ahead and uh, loaded back up. And I actually put a little wall here to kind of prevent anyone from going over there until it's unfrozen. And I think what I'm going to do is do a little bit of channeling maybe here. And make this where my bridge is instead. Or I may actually just play it safe and put the bridge over here somewhere. But we'll figure that out. That's all next. And then we're going to get into our uh, Dolomite Tavern I'm working on. Um, I've got a couple. These are going to be temples. Nice dedicated temples to something. Um, I've got this will be my sleeping quarters. And here's some walls that I put up so I can kind of put a little bit of instrumentation in the cubby. And of course, we've already got a couple of tables down. Some more on the way. Uh, stockpile of ale starting up. And I've also got a lot of engraving work. This is already smoothed out. And I did have enough dolomite blocks to floor a pretty good bit of it. So I've got engravings on the, on the tap for that. Um, and yeah, that will be my nice little tavern area. That's going to be a relatively large tavern to start. And... The big thing I have to worry about at this point is what's going to happen when this freezes and I don't want another scenario where, you know, the water unthaws and the next thing you know, a waterfall crashes down and drowns half my people. So I'm going to actually put a little wall right here when it freezes again and that will hopefully barricade off any of the stuff coming to the sides. <clears throat> Either that or it's just going to make it flow over here instead. I don't really know. I'm going to have to experiment around with it, honestly, and see uh, what we can do there. Because I really... I haven't had any disasters other than that here, but I definitely worry about, you know, issues I could have in the future. And we do have these bridges here as well, or this primary bridge here. So if I ever get attacked or whatever, I can pull this bridge up. And I think if I wall up to here... I'll be able to kind of block off an area with that bridge. All right. So let's talk future plans otherwise. So I haven't really planned what I'm going to do here. I've started building a little bit. I'm kind of making this my front door. I've walled off some areas here. Um, I'm going to put a statue there probably. And uh, start engraving all of this stuff too. And when I do that, my plan is actually to seal these hatches entirely. And I'm probably going to wall around them, just for good measure. And maybe put like a door. And, um, yeah, I'll probably at that point also move my animals to pasture kind of over in this area here. And, uh, yeah. Other thing I'll probably do on this level, I'm thinking, is that's where I'm going to put my barracks. 
I'm thinking I'm going to put a barracks there, and I want to put a barracks uh, right in this area as well. Just because when this freezes, this is like a wide open avenue of attack. So I don't know if I will get attacked, but I don't think I'm near any goblins, if I recall correctly. But, you know, where beasts and whatnot can show up in. Hello, there's a naked dwarf there. Okay. Wow. Don't mind his uh, little dwarf knob. So anyways, yeah, with that being said, this is what I've got going so far. Um, the trades have went really well. I've been doing a lot of... So I'll talk about that a little bit, the strategy I use there. Um, I prepare lavish meals. Lots of them. They get shoved into crates. <clears throat> And um, I wait till I, of course, get some materials before I tell it to do that. But effectively, what will happen is it'll start loading up all these crates and barrels and whatnot. And I've got a lot of special ingredients like jellyfish, too. Because I'm not that far from the sea. So what will end up happening, um, you'll get a lot of these meals. And, like, if you load a barrel up with, like, you know, meals worth, like, a thousand... You may get 55 of those in a single barrel, and by the time the next time the trader comes, you have, you know, 55k worth of collateral you can trade in food. And also, um, I tend to have some loose meals that aren't in barrels yet, so what I've been doing is using those as like, hey, here's a thousand, I guess it's gold, meal. I don't know what the currency is, actually, because I haven't minted coins, so I guess it's whatever. But I'm like, here's a thousand whatever's worth of uh, food. So Merry Christmas to you. And I've been doing that to kind of try to keep them coming back. Uh, let's see, some other plans we have at this point. I have this whole area up here. I'm kind of going through and cutting down basically every tree to get my uh, wood supplies going. And I kind of, when I started off, put a wood stockpile up here. I've got a little bit of farming going. I haven't had any luck with farming. Like, it feels like pretty much no matter what I do, I end up with, like, nothing. Either that or they're gathering it so quickly I never notice it. I don't know. Oh, blackberries. That seems like it would make some good fruity proof. <clears throat> and then this is, like, kind of a little... Creator, I'm going to put some nest boxes here and uh, let my chickens and stuff hang out there. Got this for purple helmets, or plump helmets rather. And yeah, I've had, once again, I've run out of seeds. Like even telling them not to use them in the kitchen so I recover seeds, I seem to run out. So, eh. And of course, here's my farmer. I've got two farmer workshops and going uh, two butcher shops, one of which has got some rotten loose lungs apparently i got my fishery and then of course my tanner and probably one thing i'm planning on doing now that i have a good fishing presence down here i may go ahead and make a fishery downstairs closer to where i've pushed everyone to fish from let's see we're just leaving random fish laying around so no bueno and then of course i do have some people i think that may be fishing up here out of the lakes and whatnot as well and I'm considering what I want to do long term with these. Because like I could just channel this out and then I create another waterfall here. So I've got some options to make some more uh, waterfalls and whatnot. <clears throat> and this is effectively um, where I've told everyone to fish out of. Some wood trap down here somehow. So anyways, that's uh, in a nutshell this dwarf fortress. So... Yeah, like I said, leave a comment. Uh, let me know if you want something named after you, or for whatever. I might, uh, I'm even willing to name bridges after people in some cases. So, yeah, please, by all means. And uh, I hope you enjoy the series. It's going to be a very long series, probably. It depends, uh, I guess, how uh, long the fortress lasts. But I am pretty stoked about this one. I'll probably live stream it a little bit later today as well. And we'll, uh, you know, continue on our adventure and try some stuff down here to control this water because I think that's okay. That's mist. Yeah, I don't know about this. This scares me a little bit. But anyways, that being said, folks, thank you for watching. Uh, please do the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, comment, etc.
And as I always say, enjoy the rest of your day, and thanks for watching this Dwarf Fortress video.